Hello everybody, the Rapid in the Grand Chess Tour has finished today with Hikaru Nakamura winning the competition with 7 points out of 9, a great day for him today. The second was Magnus Carlsen with 6.5, it was definitely a very exciting day and I really hope you guys watch the games. However, for today I've decided to go on to another very strong tournament um, the Capablanca Memorial, which uh, has started yesterday and six players are co competing. And I found a very interesting game that kind of shows how important it is to play with a clear plan. To make sure you're doing something and uh, not just make moves because you have to. So it's very important to have a plan and it is something that Black has not really done in this game. The game that I chose for today is between Vasily Ivanchuk, who played white pieces, against Almashi Zoltan. Two very strong chess players, once again competing in the Capablanca Memorial. And please be aware that I haven't forgotten about the Grand Chess Tour. I mentioned to you about it. I encourage you to watch the live transmission. Uh, there are great uh, commenting going on. But um, for today, I found this game a little bit more interesting. And I thought I'd give it a shot. So I really hope you enjoy it. We had d4, knight f6, knight f3, e6. And now Ivanchuk went for bishop g5. This is called the Torre attack. Many of you uh, might know uh, the name, but might not know the person behind it. So, uh, Torre was the first Mexican grandmaster. If you are not familiar with him, be sure to Google him and find out some very interesting facts. Uh, until then, of course, I hope you are enjoying his uh, opening. h6, bishop h4, and now c5. This is a typical approach when uh, somebody just spins your knight in f6 and um, just puts one pawn in the center. Uh, black has played e6, so now the possibilities for white of going for d5 are restricted. So black has the opportunity of breaking through the center quite easily. And white's normal response in the Torah is c3. Now, e3 is also another possibility here, um, but in this game, Ivanchuk decided to go for c3 first, not being afraid of the capture here, because, of course, the pawn takes back, and um, if black were to play d5, eventually we notice that although the pawn structure is symmetrical, these two bishops right, are very different. White has already taken the bishop out, whereas black will have to leave with the bishop in c8, which doesn't do very much. So there was no need for Vasily to worry about that capture. And in this position, Almashi chose to play d5. Personally, um, I believe there are other moves that are very interesting in this position. And the main one is b6. Now, the idea of b6 is, of course, to develop the bishop in b7, and knowing that with a pawn in e6 that bishop won't go out, why would we play d5 too early and not give a chance to this bishop? You know, b6 kind of uh, creates some opportunities for the light square bishop for black. And white normally continues e3 here, and bishop b7, knight b to d2. So white chooses this quiet... Uh, approach for the moment just until he's able to finish up his development with the bishop in d3 the queen normally goes to e2 and then he's going to continue pushing this e pawn e4 possibly later e5 it really depends on black's reaction and uh, many games have been played here black normally continues bishop e7 and white goes bishop d3 and uh, eventually black does capture in uh, in d4 and after e takes d4 they go d6 so trying to play some type of um, not exactly Sicilian but more like um, uh, Pyrrhic type of position and um, well it's it's about equal that knight gets developed to to d7 castle and then uh, black is trying to to start pushing the pawns 
on the queen side most likely. So, however, in after c3, Almashu decided to go for d5. So going for for the center, but once again, it is very important to know that this bishop in c8 could have troubles getting out and finding a good idea for it. So Ivan took e3, development, knight b to d2. So far, so good. Everything is theory. Um, well, maybe not theory theory, but it has been played before, so it can be considered as real theory. Um, it's it's quite, um, I mean, both white and black can choose um, in this type of positions where there isn't a direct contact in the center that's going to force any tactical ideas. Both players can choose how they want to develop their pieces. So here, basically, um, like I said earlier, white normally takes their bishop in d3, try to create some um, ta uh, tactical ideas later on on the b1 h7 diagonal, and of course prepare to play e4. Uh, and black, after they have played d5, they will try to find a way to push their pawns on the queen side, or they will try to play e5, but that's a little bit harder to do. So in this position, um, some of the moves that black have, has tried are queen b6, um, another one is bishop d6, and bishop e7. The move which was played in the game was c takes d4. Now let's talk about this move for a little bit. This pawn in c5 is capturing in d4, but... If you consider it, that pawn doesn't get traded for the pawn in d4. In fact, it does get traded for this pawn in e3. And considering how much space each pawn leaves behind, we certainly note that black um, had more space with that pawn in c5 than white did with this pawn in e3. Now, it doesn't matter so much, you might say, that you know there's just a trade just to be able to develop the bishop so that white doesn't take in c5 and force that bishop to move once again. Uh, and black doesn't, you know, open white's bishop to get out because the bishop is already out. So what's the big deal about the position? Right now, uh, the big deal is that it's very important to keep tensions in the center, specifically when you are not very clear how your plan is going to look. So Black should keep the pawn in c5 to keep the opportunity of opening up in d4 whenever they are ready. Um, if, um, if they take too early, like it happened in this game, white will have the e-file opened, and they're going to be able to utilize the outpost e5 um, and then prepare later on some f4, f5s, like in the Pillsbury attack. So it is very important to remember this. Keep your tensions unless you find it super necessary to make the trades. Now, like I said, queen b6 was a move that has been played before. And, um, okay, the b2 pawn is being attacked. So if white goes for rook b1, um, in this position, uh, black could consider going, for example, knight to d7. And what would be the idea of this? Well, uh, they will try to avoid allowing white to capture the knight, and then, of course, prepare some e5 and um, attack the center. This is some interesting possibility. Something else that black would have tried is, of course, develop the bishop, either d6 or e7. Um, oopsie, I'm sorry, <laughs> bishop e7. Uh, but in that case, um, of course, white would have most likely continued bishop d3 and then um, black and castle, or they can try to actually trade that bishop with knight h5. Personally, I would like to castle first. And um, if white castles, then b6, bishop b7, holding on to the position for, for a little bit and see how white does want to continue playing e4. Keep in mind that white won't be able to play it just like that, just e4, because black will capture then in d4, and uh, they will be creating an isolated pawn. So you see, once this pawn is moved, white won't be able to capture back in d4 with the e-pawn, so it is better to make sure 
that we are waiting a little bit longer with that capture. And of course, if white captures in c5, black can recapture with a pawn. And then when e4 is played, well, that's another story. We basically have um, a Meran with reverse colors. Well, anyways, bishop d6 and bishop e7 were certainly some interesting opportunities here for black. And uh, to tell the truth, they would be my first personal choices. I'm a little bit surprised of Grandmaster Almashi's um, capture in d4 because I certainly believe that this position is better for white. White has a clear plan. Once again, like I mentioned, they're going to finish their up their development with bishop d3 and then queen e2, put their knight in e5 and start pushing the pawns on the king side. And that is exactly what Ivanchuk did. And we all know Ivanchuk is a uh, more of a tactical player than he is positional, so ideas like this he does not uh, he does not miss. Okay, castle, queen e2. Now in this position, uh, white has tried castle before, of course it seems like a natural move, um, and um, this is technically black's plan, trying to put the uh, to push the pawns on the queen side. And then queen e2, b5 was played, and um, eventually the, that game was between Meister and Gressman and um, Black um, was an 18, 1900 player so definitely uh, the game went into White's favor but uh, it is clear that White's uh, plan is to attack on the king side and Black's plan is to uh, start pushing the pawns to the minority attack on the queen side. Ivanchuk went for queen e2 first however um, trying to see how black is going to approach this position. Are they going to try to trade this bishop in h4? He didn't want to hurry to castle short because there is also the possibility of castling sh long if black is not going to push the pawns very soon. So very important to note if you're playing the Torre attack, try to hold on to uh, the castle just for a little bit longer. You're not going to miss anything. You won't be... Um, attacked, <laughs> your king will be able to castle right or left, so everything is going to be fine, just um, try to see how your opponent wants to plan things. And knight h5 was Almash's um, decision here. You know, when I saw this game, I didn't believe uh, this was the best choice. I, I do know that it is very important for black to trade that bishop eventually. In fact, for black it's good to, to trade pieces at some point, but, you know, knight h5 just didn't didn't look good to me personally. Um, I feel that once again, trying to develop on the queen side first, either b6, bishop b7, or a6, b5, would have been um, slightly better for black. Why don't I like knight h5 so much, you might ask? Well, I believe in this position, Almashi might have expected Ivanchuk to go for bishop g3. Um, and, um, of course, then that knight will be able to capture uh, in g3 immediately uh, or later. I think later is definitely better. First bishop d7, and if white decides to castle, it is at that moment that black will capture, just to make sure there won't be any sacrifices in h6 if this move is played earlier. And so white can take with either one of the pawns and their attack on the king side is going to be much slower, specifically also because black can consider some f6, e5 at some point if they want to, uh, not only the minority attack. But anyways, um, I found Ivanchuk's move really awesome because he traded in e7 and after queen takes e7 now of course there's a little threat knight f4 we have to be on the look for we don't want to give away our strong bishop in d3 this is white's good bishop they want to keep it so Ivanchuk played queen e3 to avoid knight f4 and after rook b8 black is starting supposedly the attack on the queen side now castle and now, white's plan is going to be put into motion after knight e5, f4, g4, f5. And 
it seems like black is a little bit behind with their plan. If uh, they consider playing b5 in this position, white can simply respond a3 first if they want to, and then knight e5, and the pawns can go, or even knight e5 immediately would work. Um, and, uh, of course, trading here is a big, big blunder, and I hope you all see why. Queen takes e5, double attack. So black cannot capture, they have to protect their knight, let's say bishop d7, and now uh, white can try to go for knight b3, knight c5, and they will have two awesome knights um, on two very nice spots in this position, um, certainly in white's favor. But, but, I believe knight f6 was a better choice for black than the move which was played in the game. Um, as we notice, black's knight in h5 uh, had a role, of course, to, to trade white's active bishop in h4. And it did its job, and now it's time to make sure to bring this knight back into play. Knight at the margin is not something that um, we expect to see in a chess game played by strong chess players. The knight has to be brought back into play via of course f6 and if knight e5 now of course knight, the knight doesn't hang with the rook so um, black and of course keep in mind the opportunity of capturing after d takes 97 black does give that pawn in a7 but um, I think after b6 they do have some comp uh, compensation for the pawn um, Possibly after knight f6, another possibility um, here would be uh, maybe queen c7 and if f4 trying to develop that bishop. It seems really, however, that white's plan keeps being very fast and black is really behind with b5, a5, b4. By the time they do something, they might get mated on the king side. This is what I meant when I told you at the beginning of the video that it is very important to have a plan and stick to it. Black kind of, um, it seems like they lost a lot of time um, trading pieces and allowed white to um, make every move part of their plan. Queen f6 was the move played, and I believe this is a mistake because, once again, it leaves that knight in h5, and um, the queen doesn't have a clear idea with being in f6. In fact, white can just play g3 to avoid any possible trades, after which the same plan stays in play. Knight e5, f4, the rook can come to e1, g4, and then f5 or g5. Bishop d7. And I really want you to enjoy Vanchuk's continuation, knight e5. Of course, uh, trades are not in black's favor because pawn takes. And if you try to trade queens, don't worry, you're just helping me f4. Um, so queen e7 was played, still f4. <laughs> Finally, Black decided to retreat their knight in f6. Well, it's time to bring the last piece into play. This knight is going to eventually be able to be brought to f3 as well. Black has to play on the queen side. That's their uh, main place to play. There's nothing to do here. Um, and in the same time, I want you to notice that bishop in d7. Try to avoid playing positions like this because you're going to suffer a lot with that bishop in d7, whereas white will have the opportunity of retreating to b1, queen d3, and have mating ideas. And you have to stay passive with your bishop in d7 um, without... Basically, it's like playing without a piece. Okay, so, it's Ivanchuk. He went for the attack. He didn't even need to play king h1. And now it might seem like black can win a pawn, right? Knight takes e5, and after f takes e5, knight takes g4, which is exactly what happened in the game. But rest assured, 
this wasn't really something uh, that white didn't plan for. Queen g3. Now what are you going to do about your knight in g4? h5. Okay. So it's just temporary. The white gave away a pawn, but do you realize that the f and g file have been opened? Uh, that bishop remained dead. Um, black's rooks are on the other side of the board, and it is white who is ready to open up the g file as well. At their convenience, they can play h3 to chase that knight away. But first, before we consider that, let's just go rook e2 in trying to improve the position of this rook, right? And double on the g file. Um, here, Almashi thought it might be better to try to open up the 7th rank by playing f5. However, he just, uh, we have an expression in Romanian, went into the wolf's mouth. In the sense that he just opened up the position in the place that it is only white who can have some chances of, of uh, winning. So this was a big, big mistake. Instead of f5, I think black had to, even in the last moment, go ahead and make their plan with b5, b4, trying desperately to create some threats on the other side of the board. And after h3, of course, the knight would have to go back to h6, and after rook g2, trying to protect this way. Um, it's not that beautiful, because here there's a very nice move for white, rook f6. So it's it's tough to, to hold on to the position, but at least that's, that's a possibility white would have to find all these moves. Um, which, okay, to tell the truth, maybe it's not that difficult, but um, it, it's important to play with a plan, even if it's a bad one. It's better than just um, make moves and allow your opponent to do whatever they, they wish. So after f5, even to captured... Knight took in f6, what to do if the pawn takes? I think it's quite obvious. Simply h3, and this knight is going to be lost on the pin. So knight takes f6. Um, now um, rook e to f2, of course, because of the pin. White is threatening this knight. Okay, the knight has to move again. Now the rook gets active, rook f7. Queen g5. Of course, black doesn't want to sacrifice. In case of queen takes f7, we have, of course, an intermediate move. Bishop h7 check. And if king, the king goes to, h, to f8 check. And now bishop g6. Very beautiful. Threatening the queen. And, of course, you cannot capture because of rook f8 mate. And uh, whichever other move, white is just going to capture the queen. After queen g5... White took that bishop in d7, and now h4, chasing the queen away. Black took the knight in d2, um, trying to complicate the position a little bit, trying to get some counterplay, but unfortunately things are getting to an end for him after the beautiful move, rook takes g7 check. If the king captures back to g7, there's mate in three moves. Queen c7 check. And now the king has to go either h6 or h8. And now queen h7 mate. So black had to respond king h8. And now please pause the video for a final move of the game. Well, close to the final move. Rook takes g4, pawn took g4, little check here, the king went to g8, thank you very much for another wonderful pawn, and now queen takes d5, and mate is coming um, in the next couple of moves, after king g7, we've got rook, queen d7 check, Queen takes, the king goes once again to h6 or h8, and now queen h7 mate. I really hope you enjoyed this game. 
Um, it was played between two very strong chess players, and as you can see, even strong chess players can make bad positional uh, mistakes or bad decisions in their um, choice of opening or choice of plans. So I wanted to show you this game to emphasize, uh, emphasize on the importance of having a plan and uh, sticking to it. Even if it is bad, at least you would have some uh, something to fight for. Whereas in this game, it just seemed like Black was just... Um, he just lost without very much uh, to do. Um, that's enough for today. I'm going to see you in my next video tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye.